Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes? Okay. Um, welcome to our first webinar of this school year. Today, Ms. Batista is joining me. We are going to do these webinars every Thursday from 2 to 2.30 p.m. But this year, we're gonna do it a little different and we're gonna alternate between lower and upper elementary. So today, we're gonna focus on early childhood to second grade and then next Thursday is for parents of students who are in third to fifth grade. I'm gonna share my screen to show you our presentation. Our topic today is about virtual learning for young learners. And we're gonna do it more interactive than before. We hope that you all participate when we ask some questions because we wanna do it more dynamic. Just let me. Just let me share. Second. I don't know, Ms. Batista, if while I look for the screen, you want to introduce yourself in case they don't know you. Hi, everyone. My name is Yanisel Batista. I am the school counselor for third to fifth grade. I'm very glad to, he to be here sharing with all of you uh, information for, you know, better parenting. Um, we are going to, as Ms. Roxana said, alternate the topics. So uh, today I'm here to support uh, Ms. Roxana to develop the virtual learner experience the, for, your, for your virtual learning experience for young learners. Thank you. Screen. Ms. Batista. We want to start um, with this uh, slide that says, you know, growth mindset mantras for parents. And we find it very appropriate as we are just starting this new school year. Uh, please remember, we don't need all the answers to get started. Everything is figure it out, Abel. My child, their teacher and I are on the same team. We don't know the full plan yet, but we will figure it out. Together, we can do hard things. This is hard, but we can work together for solutions. These are some mantras to keep in mind every time we feel drained, we feel frustrated, we feel that we can't go on. Remember these ideas and to keep on going. Okay, so now we are going to share with you different scenarios of situations that are true story, believe me. And we want to hear some comments from you or ideas about what we can do to help these children. So the first scenario, you can unmute yourself or you may comment on the chat. The first scenario is the following. A kinder student tries to stay focused on her Zoom class while her baby brother cries. Then she's sitting at the dinner table and her mother is trying to feed her two-year-old brother while she's in class. Her older brother is sitting at the other end of the table having a snack because he just finished his class and has some transition time. Okay, so this is a real story. <laughs> Can you share with us um, some of the ideas that you might have to um, help these parents improve this situation? You may comment on the chat or you may unmute yourselves. I don't know if there's any. Okay. 
also, if you had a similar situation uh, and, and you want to share how you manage it, you're more than welcome to participate. Okay, there's a comment here. It says, Okay, it says the child will get a lot of things. Hold on, Ms. Roxana. Let me read. Okay, so the first comment is the child will get a lot of distracted and need a private place to focus on. There's another comment, try to separate the kids like snack is in the kitchen. Okay, any other, any other comments? I think someone wanted to unmute them, themselves, Ms. Batista. I don't know if you can. Use headphones. Yes, create a workspace away from the kitchen if possible. Any other ideas? Has anyone experienced something like this? Not maybe not the same exact situation, but something similar. Okay. All right, here we are going to share some tips. This has to do with the learning environment. Okay, in education, the learning environment is, is sometimes called as a third teacher. Okay, one is the curriculum itself. The second one is the relationship between the teacher or the teacher assistant and the students. And the third one is the learning space. And we know this is kind of challenging for you right now because you know it's your home and you some of you or most of you are also working from home so this but the space is something that we need to take care about because it's where the students experience learning and some of the conditions that support the learning so today we're just going to share some tips that could help you improve the learning environment the first one is reduce distractions okay if distractions are related to siblings Yes, find a separate space for siblings to work on their own space is a good idea. Try, for, try to find places that are not, um, you know, full of toys, for example. Maybe the playroom is not the best place for Zoom meetings. Um, or any other thing that you consider could distract your child, okay? You can either write a list, okay, possible distractors and try to check out all of these um, items. You need also to find a place where you can have all the materials available, only the materials that the child needs to use in every class. Sometimes there is kids who have a lot of, you know, pencils, coloring pencils, uh, different color pens and different stuff, and that could become a distractor. So make sure that you only have available the things that they're actually gonna use. A place that is comfortable for them. It needs to have the appropriate light, illumination. It needs to have um, ventilation so they're not too cold or they're not sweating. And also, if, if it's too tall, maybe they're gonna be uncomfortable. You need to find the adequate space where they can see the screen and they can stay looking at the camera and also be available we're talking about young children in, i know that for early childhood three and four someone like an adult is required to be close to them during zoom meetings but for kinder first and second grade they are um they are capable of being on their own in the zoom meetings and maybe you can be close so that if there's a, if the connection isn't working, if they need some kind of help, they can reach out to you, but you don't need to be just, you know, beside them. Okay, now we have the second situation here. Okay, well, we have a second situation. This time is a second grade student uh, who was very upset during his morning meeting because his parents forced him to attend. Like every morning, he didn't want to wake up early and argues with his mom or dad. 
he refuses to take a shower and change his clothes, so he joins the class in pajamas. Due to all this hustle, he didn't have time to eat breakfast. So can you picture this situation? Let's use the chat to share some ideas as we did before for the first situation. Uh, what, what do you suggest? What do you think will be some, some tips, some... Okay, we have here a comment says, create a daily routine to put them to bed earlier, right? Yeah, because if, if the child is having like a hard time to wake up in the morning, maybe he is not having enough, enough sleep, right? Discuss with the child about next day plan so the child is mentally prepared. Excellent. Creating anticipation, right? To, to make them aware of what's coming. Make sure the child eats first before joining the class. If, they, if not, they will be preoccupied with hunger, exactly. Yeah, if we're hungry, we cannot learn, right, if properly. Okay. Great, great comments. Begin the morning routine before to, sorry, this is before, before to have time to calm him. Exactly, uh -huh. having some time for transitioning, right, between activities. You have to understand what is the need of the child to address their response. Understand where, where is the stress coming from, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And identify if it's a pattern and it happens every day, what might be triggering those reactions, right? Excellent. Okay. Well, the next one was Roxana. Well, this, this scenario, this situation has to do with routines, as you mentioned. Consistent routines are very, very important. A routine is a sequence of actions that are followed regularly and provide a sense of consistency. And they are very important because they give children that sense of control that they need, that they know what, what's going to happen next. Okay, the next one, yeah. So, well, here we have some tips. Number one is planning, planning, planning is the key, okay? The key with little kids at home is to just plan something, having something planned. Kids thrive on a routine. It's com comforting for them to know what's gonna be next in their day. Even those things, even, even the, uh, they don't like the, those things or they have to do some things they don't like, it's important for them that it's in the routine and it's coming next. Uh, we're not talking about, you know, planning every single minute of, 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 of the day, um, but having like an idea of, of what's next, it will help you channel not only your energy, but also your child's energy properly throughout the day. Uh, try to write a schedule, but, but keep it loose, okay? Uh, there's nothing magical about any one particular routine. It's the one that works for you and for your family. It will probably change uh, in a month anyway, because with young children, routines are, you know, often changing. But simply having some sort of like written out plan helps to know what's next and how to stay focused and not feel like, like you're running all the time. And also you can plan activities for broad periods of time. You don't have to have like a detailed routine like 8, 8.30, 8.45, no. You, you can have broader periods of time like some activities planned for early mornings, around noon or early or late afternoons. Uh, try to print out your schedule. Uh, we recommend use, using visual aids for, for, for non-readers with, with, you know, like drawing. Uh, and, and this is a great help to be aware of what's next in the day. Uh, do what you can to have your little ones to help you, okay? They, 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 young children, they love, they think the chores are great fun, okay? So have them help. Uh, maybe they can put away, you know, the silverware for, from the table, fold some towels. These are also activities that can help them with their, with their fine and moderate growth skills. Um, 
pick up toys, wash dishes, dishes, just put like a, like a bit of watery soap in the sink with some safe dishes and sponge. And this will, will also help them to become more independent and proactive. Teach them to value, teach them the value of waiting, okay? It, it's okay for kids to learn that mom and dad has a job and, and that they cannot play with them all the time. Uh, you know, the world doesn't revolve around them. And this is a good truth to learn as early as possible. Routines help to create clear boundaries in, in terms of time. Your time, my time, our time together as a family. Uh, another tip is to make naps and quiet times essential uh, because you know little kids need a lot of sleep. Slightly older kids need to learn also the value of, of playing alone or having alone time. And also parents need a break to do you know grown up work. So these naps and quiet times allow you to have those individual times. And another tip is to know your energy levels. Are you a morning person or, or more like an afternoon person or an evening person? For example, I am an, a morning person, so I make every effort to, to focus on tasks that, that require full brain engagement uh, in the morning. So in the afternoon, I used to, to like to organize, I, I organize my afternoons, you know, for, with activities that require uh, less energy and that don't demand too much physical energy. So make the most of your energy and this will help you feel more productive. Okay, so the third and last scenario would be an easy for a student who is consistently expressing that he doesn't know, he doesn't understand, and he can't do an activity without even trying. It's not like he tried and then he says he doesn't know. No, beforehand he's saying he can't. His first reaction to every project assigned is to look to his parents for support or approval. When his parents don't do it for him, he becomes very frustrated and starts spouting until everything is done for him. So on the chat, you can write some comments about how could we help these parents support their child? Do you have any ideas? If it is, this is this is a tricky one. Okay, let's move to the tips. This has to do, okay, use mantra together, we can do hard things. Oh, I love those. And you know, having like mottos with your children helps a lot because these are like short phrases that remind them of certain behaviors. Okay, let me accept someone here okay this scenario has to do with achieving independence so what is independence it's to think and act by themselves according to their age of course and this um, act of being independent improves their self-confidence when we do everything for our children we are not helping them we are sending a message that they are not able to do things. And this has a negative impact on their self-confidence. So we want to differentiate between supporting our children and be there for them and doing everything for them. It's a big difference. Okay, people keep joining. So what are the tips? Let's see. So first you may use, this is like a strategy, a traffic light system for children to ask for help. So you can do it with cards or maybe with cups. You can color the cups in three different colors and they can put it on the table um, to communicate with you. So the red light could be, um, I mean, I'm like a stop card. I cannot continue with this because I try and I didn't understand. I don't know how to do it I, and I need your help. The yellow one could be, I think I might do it, but I have some questions. And then the green light or the green cover card could be, I am um, okay, I can go ahead and do my work independently. This is one idea. 
then allow children to make mistakes because those are learning opportunities. I have seen that sometimes children show like perfect writing, you know, the younger ones, like something is perfectly written with the spelling is amazing. Or early childhood students with something that is perfectly colored in the lines. And then we as teachers are like, hmm, maybe someone give a little help here or someone did the work for them. And it's actually not like about completing work. It's about giving them the opportunity to have a learning experience. So mistakes are okay because mistakes communicate to the teachers what's the level of each student and where they need to support them. Praise their efforts and not the result. And also praise specific behaviors. Instead of saying like, oh, you're so smart, you're so intelligent, you're so independent for them because they're too little and they're so concrete, they need like specific things that they are doing. And when you praise those behaviors, they know that they will continue doing it because it's good for them. So instead of saying, oh, you're so smart, you can say, um, I love how you completed all these uh, words on your own. The words that they wrote might be, might not be spelled appropriately, but it's the effort that you recognize. And then offer realistic choices and let them decide. So between the things that they have to do on their own, you can choose uh, some options for them and then provide these options uh, so that they can think and feel empowered then at their young age they can de decide some things. Okay, so now we open the space to questions. Let me give you the opportunity to unmute yourselves if you want to. Okay, you may unmute yourselves if you, if you wanna share or if you wanna ask a question or you can write your comments on the chat. Okay, someone is asking if this will be recorded, yes. No, you can't, let me see. Okay, can you unmute yourselves now? Okay. Okay. Ms. Roxana, good afternoon, everybody. I just have um, one thing to add. And if you have that, and that is that if you as parents have your own scenarios at home that you would like to share or um, get some advice from our counselors, you can either bring them and explain them now or you can um, contact them directly also. Okay, we have a question here. Okay, for the kids that don't understand English very well, do you recommend using headphones? Well, from kinder to second grade, we're using headphones and I think it was included in your, I think it was included in your bag. Um, and for younger students, EC3, EC4, the TAs are translating. So the homework teacher is always speaking in English. And then if someone doesn't understand that the teacher assistants are translating in Spanish, um, like important ideas or questions that the student might have. first grade. Okay, if she doesn't understand English, she can ask the teacher and then the teacher will explain in English in a way that she will understand. Or even sometimes translate. But don't worry because she, the teacher will find a way so that she, to make sure that she understands with the English. Is she, is she receiving like EAL classes? because you may all, not yet, okay. You may also ask for support from the, um, from the TA in first grade to support her with the 
um, with the translation. Yeah, the TAs are translating. Okay. I'm gonna write my email here in case you wanna contact, contact me. I'm, I'm going to also um, add to the chat uh, a link uh, that I found very helpful to, to set up the routines and it can help you to set up a routine for younger children. Uh, okay, so there it is. Uh, we're running out of time because this new format is very brief because it's, it's uh, focused on sharing specific tips to a particular topic. Um, we, for those of you who, who join us, uh, a little bit late. We, we, we're gonna rec we're recording the session and we're gonna be sharing it in our YouTube channel. We're also uploading the materials, the slide presentation and the link to the video in our uh, website, the counselor's website where you can access this material and previous material from other meetings. Do you have any other questions? Okay, my daughter sometimes does not want to zoom in and she wants, she starts to cry from frustration because she wants to keep playing. Okay, something that might help is to ask her about her Zoom meetings. Um, you need to observe like, if is there a specific time of the day that she's refusing to participate more? Maybe the ones that are early in the morning, the ones in the afternoon or maybe um, she's like struggling with transitions. Maybe she's having playtime just before the Zoom meeting. So ask her a little bit and observe about the situation and make sure that she understand and has displayed her schedule so that, so that she knows what to expect and that there are specific times that she is expected to participate in the Zoom meeting and try to put those uh, play times uh, maybe after the meeting so that she knows that what to expect and knows that after she completes with her assignments, she will have that extra time to play later. But I would, I would ask her um, some questions like what is going on? Sometimes kids refuse to participate in some activities and they give an excuse. And when you start asking questions, you find out something else. Maybe it's because she doesn't understand the class or she feels uncomfortable for some reason. So I would ask first what's going on and then plan a strategy based on her answers. Mm, I don't know, Ms. Batista, if you wanna add something? Okay. Hello, my easy for a class have never translated. I have to sit every class to translate, okay. We can, we can talk to the teachers. I've been to morning meetings this week. I'm joining EC3. I went to uh, yesterday and the day before yesterday, I went to two EC3 morning meetings and today I went to one EC4 and they, they got translation, but we can talk to the teachers and make sure that, you know, Spanish speakers are also getting the, the class because they're very young and for them, it's easier to learn a new language, but in this setting, it might be a little bit challenging. It is easy for, okay. Okay, so to wrap up our session today, this is, this is the first time that we do like a short meeting. Last year, they were a little longer. And I hope you like this format. We try to do it more dynamic. Um, so, to, to improve the virtual experience of young learners, we recommend three areas. Make sure that the learning environment is appropriate for them with a uh, few distractions, somewhere that they feel comfortable. The second one is to establish a routine. Make sure that they know this routine and make it visible for them. And the third one is to improve independence by letting them learn on their own pace and by themselves, according to their age, of course. 
Okay, so Ms. Batista, I don't know if you want to say something before we end our meeting. Okay. Thank you very much for joining us today. We are here for you and we hope you can join us in our future meetings. Once we, once we upload the video on our YouTube channel, we're also sharing on our website and we will include the presentation we share today with more information. So it's gonna be like a PDF with more tips, what we share with you. It's gonna be um, summarized so that you also have those tips available. So on Friday, you can check our website. Maybe Ms. Batista, if you can share the link with them on the chat. Um, you have all these resources available and we are constantly um, uploading articles on our website for you to check about you know education and topics related to counseling okay mr carter who works with us in secondary school is is sharing a message here good luck to all the med parents out there Okay, thanks for all the information. Thank you, Carolina. Okay, so you may access through this link. And on this uh, website, you may find all of our emails and information, all of the videos from the previous, um, from, the, from last year's webinars are also there. And we'll be posting this Friday, the information from this webinar. So we have less than a minute, see you. In two weeks, next week is the upper elementary turn, and then we'll see each other again in two weeks.